Hi, everybody. It's still June 14, 2021. Massive flooding all over the world. This video, I'm going to start just giving you a glimpse of Victoria, Australia. Yeah. Just came out of a very restrictive lockdown, only to be hit with massive flooding. This is what is happening to an awful lot of people all over the world. I don't know how these people manage to recover. If it's happened maybe once or twice to you and, you know, you're in good shape financially, have the right kind of insurance, you can recover. There's an awful lot of people who today can't. Oh, they might, you know, have their finances in order, but not in order enough to recover from recurrent flooding, repeated flooding. They lose their insurance. FEMA doesn't help out because what does FEMA do? Well, you have these pockets of our country, and I'm going to show you just this past week how many homes are destroyed by flooding, how many communities are destroyed by flooding, but you got to get to a certain number for FEMA assistance. If you're not at that number, well, too bad on you. You don't get any assistance. And insurance companies, even if you have them, I've been doing this for years. I know full well that a whole lot of people who experience, experiences this kind of disaster, personal disaster, they find out that insurance that they have been paying into for years and years and years, suddenly there's a loophole that they, well, or maybe that very fine print that they didn't read, or uh, maybe their insurance company is just going to screw them, and then they find themselves in court, you know, and it takes a whole long time. But a lot of people are being dropped by insurance companies for flood or fire. So um, what are they to do? What are they? I... I it's, for me, I look at this, and I, I am just so, well, I've said it before, just I, I feel heartbroken for all of these people that, and we've heard it, right, local news, they interview those who have the flooded homes or the burned out homes, what do they say? You know, they have nowhere to go. They have no recourse. They have nothing. All right. Victoria. As the East Coast shivered, Victoria suffered. The Antarctic blast bringing widespread destruction across the state. Trees brought crashing down onto homes at Emerald in the outer eastern suburbs of Melbourne. Not far away to Linda in the Dandenong Ranges, a woman injured, her son rescued when this tree came crashing down. The weather event also bringing flooding rain. Hundreds at Taralgan in the Gippsland region evacuated from their properties after 150 millimetres fell in a matter of hours. Homes inundated, authorities having to rescue 12 people trapped in their vehicles. One man in his 60s at Woodside couldn't be saved. This extraordinary scene played out in the basement car park at the Mantra Hotel. Rainwater swallowing cars that float away. Even the security camera submerged. And at the historic mining town at Mount Borbor, landslides after torrential rain. Didn't expect it to be like this. Across Victoria tonight, 220,000 homes are without power. The biggest blackout in the state's history. Authorities say it could take up to a week to repair down power lines. The cleanup effort, though, will take far longer. Cameron. Okay, that's Victoria and what's happening in Victoria, the, the scale of this flooding, how many 
have had their homes destroyed. Uh, I don't know how many died in the flood. Well, it deserves its own video. So let's go to the United States. How about Maine? And this is just within the last, say about five days, Continuing coverage tonight on serious flooding seen across parts of down east Maine today. Some areas seeing more than four inches of rainfall in just a matter of hours. New Center Maine's Sam Rogers has more on the impact. Lasted maybe two or three hours. Uh, continuous rain. I woke up and heard it hitting the windows. I've never heard that before that hard. All that early morning rain, Chris Marshall tells us, leading to all this damage. We've had a lot of washouts. But Shia's interim town manager, Bill Kitchen, says this part of town got four to six inches of rain. In anywhere from an hour to a couple hours. The rain flooding parts of West Kennebec Road. This early morning video taken by Marshall shows how powerful the water was. Now, I've only lived on this road for six years. Yeah. But I've talked to some of the local guys that have been here for 60 or 70 years, and they say they've never seen it. Jeez. Something like this. An overhead view taken by the Maine Forest Service showing the widespread damage across multiple towns. More damage reported in Hancock County. These photos showing the storm's effect at Acadia National Park. Back in Washington County, emergency crews standing by on land and water. Everybody's really pulled together, and obviously the number one priority is emergency access for some of our people who are at the moment cut off. The, the town of Rope Bluffs was actually completely cut off. Washington County Emergency Management Director Lisa Hanscom says the town experienced this level of flooding 10 years ago, but in one location. Now more places needing repair work. Everybody else talks about not having a lot of rain, and we seem to have had six inches over two hours. Despite all this damage to roads and people's homes, there are no injuries to report. We're really lucky because, of course, a few uh, vehicles did go to work early, early this morning um, before everything was uh, so flooded and washed out. That was sick. Yeah, okay. And I saw another uh, local broadcast where they were talking about a place in Rogue Bluff, Maine, which is very close to New Brunswick and the Canada area. They can't get to work. They can't get to school. They're cut off. Okay. We did not have rain that literally washed away roads, that collapsed bridges. And once again, I say, I believe it's the rain along with all of the frequencies that they use to control or create or divert or direct weather systems. And, of course, Maine has its own extremely low frequency site, Cutler, Maine, our military, I believe it's Navy, an extremely low frequency site with so many Gwen Towers that can emit extremely low frequencies into the atmosphere, but they can also drive them through the ground. So if you are using extremely low frequencies to drive through the ground, well, you could end up with a lot of uh, bridges collapsing, roads collapsing. Okay, here's another picture of Rogue Bluffs, Maine. This is where they're cut off. Now, uh, Arkansas, Dumas, Arkansas, well, a number of areas got hit hard. The number of homes in Dumas, Arkansas, that were flooded out, I, I swear to you, I, this will, it's, it's really hard to see this. When you've done the research, when you know, when you look at weather uh, sites, the radar and satellite sites, and you see these frequencies that are blasting away um, all the time, all the time. Let's start on the 6th, and I'll try to go through this quickly. On the 6th at uh, what time? 9.14 p.m. 9.14 p.m. Mountain Time, so 
Yeah, two hour difference. East Coast, Texas. This should not, you shouldn't see any of this on radar. You see the extremely low frequencies belting away. Oh, where? Huh. Northeast. You see Doppler radar working in Arkansas, and you also see that it's getting quite a bit of rain. Now, um, do you see how bizarre the air masses, the direction of the air masses, going up and down, kind of circling around. None of this is natural. None of it. This is a product of man controlling the weather. So this is on the 7th at 9.49 a.m., so 11.49 a.m., Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas. And you can see the frequencies. Now this is a light frequency. That was a light frequency time period. The afternoon, and we're dropping. I mean, this is like a 30 to 100. Okay, hang on. That's uh, me talking. Um, this is at 10.27. AM, sorry, on the 7th. And you can see the lineup of, yes, nanobots, the nanotechnology that they use to create or control weather, lining up North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and in the panhandle of Florida. It's looking at radar today. It is so strange because I've been viewing radar and satellites for 12 years and the enormous change that has taken place, Doppler radar, the plasma that you see, the frequencies that are just blasting away, the nanotechnology, the little, little blips of what? Precipitation could be or maybe not. So that was 10.27 a.m. on the 7th. This is the 8th, midnight. Look at this. Whoa. Now that's quite something. Uh, blasting away in northwest Texas with these extremely low frequencies. Any defined lines that have some length to it, you know that that's an extremely low frequency because extremely low frequencies, they can reach up to 300 miles. So this is now the 8th at 2.51 in the afternoon. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, it, it, it. how these meteorologists can sleep at night when they look at this and they think that this this is what weather looks like lying for a paycheck very dangerous very dangerous so let's see the 8th at um, 3 15 or 3:12 p.m. which is 5:12 in this area Look at these frequencies. Look at all of this nanotechnology, these nanobots activated. Yes, yes. Some guy or girl can sit at a computer, take orders from you know, some general or some higher up in the military, put in the coordinates, and get those nanobots operating. Look at this. This very, very dangerous pulse. Pulses in Montana, pulses in uh, 
Wyoming into, or I'm sorry, actually out of Colorado into Wyoming. All of this is not Mother Nature. So look at this, what's happening in Arkansas. <laughs> you want to talk activation of these nanobots? All lined up. This is the uh, ninth at 10.21 a.m. Look at these extremely low frequencies down here and right into Alabama, the panhandle. Look at this frequency mess down here in uh, Texas. Look at this. No. 12 years ago, you didn't see this. You didn't see it. Now we have man creating all of this weather. And as far as I'm concerned, what we are living now, everything is a creation of man. Our weather. In this area of Montana where I now live, I had a fire going every single day last week. It's so freaking hot today, I can't even sit outside. The sun is actually hotter. This is my experience of it. The sun is actually hotter here than the sun in South Carolina. So, Mississippi got flooding. Arkansas got flooding. Pennsylvania got flooding. Maine. And yes, this is your, these are the, the sparkling little dots. You can't tell me that this, that these are just clouds. These are nanobots. You're looking at nanotechnology. How could we possibly see it, Carol? It's so small. When you have a lot of nanotechnology, a lot of nanobots together, they become visible. Look at all of the microwaves. Montana. The air mass is moving every which way now, I see. That's, a, that's just a 24-7. That's what we now live. Look at the air masses going in different directions right here. I mean, a mass moving east, a mass moving west, a mass moving north, and, well, what can they do moving all of those air masses around with electromagnetic frequencies? They can create whirlwinds. They can create tornadoes. They can create weather. So... And this is the activation of nanobots creating stratocumulus clouds. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, people are losing their homes. People are being made homeless. By what you're looking at right now, this is a way to make people homeless. This is a way to shift populations, get them to move into mega regions. So that was the ninth at uh, ten thirty-seven p.m. This is the tenth at ten forty-six a.m. Look at this. First of all, yes, these frequencies they use to create or control weather fronts. They're also incredibly dangerous to life, all life, to trees, to the four-legged, to the two-legged. They affect all of us. The biological effects are there's just myriad amount of biological effects. You think this is just a natural, a natural um, weather system here? 
Why do they have these frequencies going here? Now, people need to start asking questions, not relying on mainstream media to tell you the truth because they will not. They will not tell you the truth. They have received their orders. They will not. You know, look at all of this. Now, as you can see, all of the nanobots are on the eastern side of the country. The west, mm, not so much. Oh, right, this is drought area. Okay, um... Here. You know, and I listened to these local broadcasts where they've had so much flooding and they've had, oh, we had seven inches in two hours. Really? Okay. Uh, and more rain to come. So, this is not a natural weather system here. That's artificially created. On the 11th, Look at this. You know, and sometimes I now see what, you know, we used to claim was a weather system or uh, precipitation. Well, it, it erupts out of nowhere. And, whoa, it seems to have a speed like nothing I've ever seen before. On the 12th. On the 12th. Look, you have this going in opposite directions with this blob of precipitation. That little, uh, that's the nanotechnology. That's not a frequency. Yes, the nanobots, they have their own GPS. They have their own uh they can send and receive data. They have their own ways of emitting electromagnetic frequencies, and that that can get them to move. In all, it, it you you can think of those little blips that you see in the clouds, or little blips on radar of what precipitation. Please. Now think of them as their weather soldiers. You know, little nanobot armies ready to take out a whole lot of areas wherever they're sent to, wherever they're activated. But look at all of these frequencies. Whoa, that's a pretty intense, very intense uh, shot right here in the Northeast. So all of the long ones are the extremely low frequencies, and the ripples are the microwaves, and these uh, pulsating blue patches that you see um, come from Doppler radar. We're in big trouble. You know, this is no joke. This is very serious, and an awful lot of people are suffering the effects of what you're looking at. So look at what's happening up here in Washington and Oregon. My God, really? Okay. Now Mother Nature works in a circular pattern. She doesn't work in these very defined lines. Not at all. But it's all erupting, you know, right in front of your eyes. Down here in Mississippi, it's... Uh, up here in, well, West Virginia got hit. These frequencies. Okay. Oh, uh, boy. So, let me show you what's happening in Arkansas. I'm told anytime we get a rain event like this, this type of flooding happens here in Stuttgart. The water has come so close to some people's homes, they now fear it's going to get inside. Flash flooding. 
is causing issues for people in Stuttgart. My garage is already full of water. Ruthie Hogan could barely make it out of her neighborhood Tuesday. Water is on the verge of making it inside her home. When the water overflow the ditches, then it bags up in people's yard and in the road everywhere. We just don't have nowhere for the water to go. When it rains like, as heavy as it did and as quickly as it did, we do see that a lot. Stuttgart police are blocking off streets that have flooded. Make sure that they don't get stuck or flood out their vehicles. Patrolman Paul Coven says some people are not paying attention and are getting their cars stuck. We help them out the best way we can, get them out their vehicles. That's why he's stressing the importance of not going around barricades and using your best judgment. If the water looks too high, then nine times out of ten, it's probably too hard to go through. So we likely have more rain on the way. How concerned are you? I'm very concerned because I may not be able to get in my house. Hogan has lived in Stuttgart for 25 years. She says this happens at least once a year. Stutt really? When did it start happening once a year? I need a drainage system. We don't have a good drainage system. It Ah, okay. Well, for some reason, all across the country, Americans are suffering their drainage systems in their town, in their cities. Why is that? Perhaps the taxes that you pay, you're not getting the services that you should, maybe? water, but that's not even how deep it gets here in these neighboring communities of Dumas. Now, of course, help and resources are available, but the peace of mind, some neighbors tell me, is not. I just woke up and it was water everywhere outside, and within 10 minutes, that stuff was in my house. Erica Duncan had to flee to her sister's apartment on higher ground. They need to get something done over here, because when it rained, we flood, but we ain't never flood like this. Like this, nah. She's back today to assess the damages after going to pick up sandbags to leave outside her home. Snapchat videos showing what it's like inside. It was past my ankles, but then it was too much. I just moved what I could and got out. Duncan's story is only one of the many in Dumas neighborhoods. More rain came down Wednesday morning, adding inches to the flooding. The only hope so far, sandbags being filled up by the inmates from the Arkansas Department of Corrections. Bonner unit been distributed by Dumas firefighters. And we have been, you know, putting them out to people that come over here, plus the elderly people that couldn't, you know, we've took them, you know, to them and to their homes. Three loads of sand came from the county judge, one from the mayor, an all-day operation. And we're going to try to get FEMA involved to, to help the people, you know, because the insurance companies are not going to pay for this. For example. Ah, insurance companies are not going to pay for this. Neither is FEMA. Unless you have an awful lot of destruction and you meet the numbers that FEMA uh, demands. So when a state of emergency is declared in counties or a state, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get FEMA assistance. You have to meet the requirements. So if 10 homes get damaged, too bad for them. 25 homes, I don't know what the numbers are. I can't remember. Um, yeah, insurance is not going to pay for this because, well, they claim this is groundwater. And it's because the flooding is classified as groundwater. Which so they have a tremendous amount of rain. And they're not, their homes are flooded, but they claim it's groundwater. Okay, what is happening here in the United States is that people can say whatever the hell they want to say, and that's it. That means you live in a very dangerously insane country. And those who want uh, to not give you any help, no matter how much you pay for it. Hey, it's groundwater. Too bad. Drainage systems. Groundwater? Huh. Okay. Well, let me just go through it because it's bad.
This is the second day of heavy rains in southern and eastern Arkansas. In some cases, more than 15 inches. We're going to go straight to live coverage. THV 11's Ian Russell joins us from Stuttgart, where there are several areas affected across that city. Ian, what do you got? Hey, Roller Melissa. So yeah, to be honest with you, things do not look good out here right now. Things honestly kind of look just like it is around me. A lot of water covering those roadways, but thankfully no one was hurt here in Arkansas or in Lono County last night. Of course, they are gearing up for more rain headed through this area in the overnight hours. Now, the county judge for Arkansas County told me anything under probably about three inches and they should be okay. So anything over that and maybe not be the best thing for them. But as far as yesterday goes, that judge says this is up there for the worst weather that he's ever seen here. I would say an eight uh, because as far as we know, there's been no, no one injured, no loss of life like it would be in a tornado or something and stuff just tore down and completely destroyed. But this is, this has caused a, a lot of, a lot of heartache. And, and a lot of inconvenience for people uh, going to and from work and, and, uh, and just in life in general. Okay, so <clears throat> we have never, ever, ever experienced weather like we are experiencing it uh, with increasing frequency, uh, no pun intended with the frequency. Weather never did this. Rain never did this. Now rain is doing this all over the country. Now, for those, for those who seem to have a block, you, you can continue to believe in climate change or you can do some research about weather modification to understand what is really taking place. We are at war. They are using unconventional weapons, and those weapons are weather weapons. Now, once again, I'm going to show you that I do have a... Uh, weather modification playlist and there's a whole lot on here 318 videos of all the ways in which man can create weather heat waves in fact uh, everything that we're experiencing it's unfortunate that we have so many people who just you know, refuse, even with mainstream media reporting on, well, how about that million uh, or trillion megawatt laser that can, you shoot it into a cloud and voila, you've got rain on CBS. But also mainstream media reporting on China in uh, they, the, the scale of their weather modification now they can create rain the size of india but still people just cloud seeding you know texas the the uh, texas weather modification association mainstream media interviewed the director who's now retired hey we can make rain uh on a larger scale and make it rain longer, Harvey. But still people are insistent. Insist, they insist on remaining ignorant. So more and more people are going down. And yes, do I think that we could have gotten this stopped? Or I, I, evil just, you know, unfortunately... There's a lot of indigenous um, communities that actually kill off their psychopaths because they know how dangerous the psychopath is. We like to pretend they don't exist. Oh, well, they look like us and they wear nice clothing and they're rich and we like to emulate them. Wow. Well, that kind of brings us right to what we're witnessing. How about, I believe this is West Virginia. As you can see behind me, the past week of downpours has not been kind to this town. It's a dire situation which has left some without a home to sleep in tonight and has washed away workplaces for the foreseeable future. A harrowing night for the 700 people who call West Hamlin home. 
town of West Hamlin here, we took a hard hit last night. How much more can our community take? The heavy storm last night caused damage in several areas. There were around 25 residences that were damaged. We know two of those that were destroyed. There were water rescues done in both Hamlin and West Hamlin. And on top of all of the damage done by the racing waters. The West Hamlin public water system has been damaged and there's about 450 residents without water. Many here are still stunned today at the intensity of the storm. And within, I say, three minutes, it was like a flash flood came down. It wiped out the bridge, took half my driveway out. We walked to the corner up here and looked at the house, and we saw the whole front porch and the front of the house just go down the river. And my wife started crying. She said she could not see, never seen something like this this bad. Just down the street, a daycare grapples with loss as well. We got about nine inches of water in here. You can see the floor, the carpets run, lots of toy, everything, everything. You know, we've been a lot through a lot down here. Up and down the street, neighbors could be seen helping each other to put back the pieces of their lives. I feel lucky that this is all I've got to deal with. If you keep going down the road, a lot of people have lost a lot more. I told my old lady, I said, the best case scenario, we'll put a tarp in there and make a make the kids a swimming pool. Local EMS crews are handing out supplies to clean up and stay hydrated, but all agree it's going to be a tough road ahead. People have been impacted hard. You know, they're going to have a hard time recovering from this. So we've got the lockdowns, right, that destroyed an awful lot of businesses, uh, people laid off, have no income, and then they have to deal with all of the hardship brought about deliberately. Deliberately. Dumas, Arizona. Can't play this. This is Live Storms Media. But bad, bad flooding. And, uh, yeah, you know, the drainage systems, after the rain, the water just seems to sit there. Um, look at all of these homes. Look at all of these homes. Okay? What are these people going to do? What are these people going to do? What, you know, I wish, I wish that... We could have been a different people. You know. I'm very glad that neighbors are helping out, but the neighbors, you know, have been hit hard as well. I. Live Storms Media. This is Tutwiler. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Tutwiller. Mississippi. Mississippi got hit. Again. You know, again and again, the repeated flooding, which leaves people no choice but to just hope that FEMA will come in and buy them out. Because, you know, the, the, the condition is a percentage comes from the county and the majority comes from FEMA. They buy out homes. They raise the structures. And the condition is you, you can't build in this area anymore because you've had this repeated flooding that man is bringing about. It, because that's the way they'll mitigate the floods by having no structures and just, you know, green areas. So, um, again, Mound Bayou, Mississippi. And I don't know, maybe a whole lot still believe that this is climate change. Yeah, I do. I, I think if Americans, you know, were of sound mind, were healthy human beings, I don't even think that this would have manifested. Or they certainly would have had quite the fight. This is Cleveland, Mississippi. That school is not going to be operating for a while. 
and these people in their homes. You know, a whole lot of farmland once again destroyed. Food shortages, inflation. Yeah, we're in, we're in this is this affects all of us. It doesn't just affect those who have lost their homes in this area. It affects every one of us. Look at this farm. You know, listening to the local broadcast, farmers saying crops destroyed. You know, and it always struck me as odd that farmers don't get that's at least, in the very least, you know, farmers, you would think, pay attention to the sky, you know, pay attention to the weather. They would notice the drastic changes in our sky. They would notice, hey, what are they spraying all the time? What the hell are those clouds? What What's going on with all of the weird colors in our sky? Nope. Nope. Scott County, Kentucky. All of this just in the last week. You know, trees down, flooded roads, road closures, um, Yeah, look at that. Now the trees, all of the spraying of the heavy metals, the toxic ingredients that they spray goes into the root system of the tree, and the tree becomes very sick. Their immune system is weakened, and they topple over easily. But you can see all of the fungus, all of the fungal disease on these trees that topple so easily. We're so disconnected from nature, we can't even recognize what is a healthy tree, what is a sick tree. Sick tree, fungal disease. It's weak. So if you've got these trees that, especially those trees around your home, take it down. Take it down. Because trees are toppling all over, just coming down. So this is uh, Garland and Plano. That's Texas. Flooding in Garland today, the same area where a woman's car was swept away on Saturday night. Her body was found several hours later downstream. There was also more heavy rain today in Plano where flash flooding on Saturday left a teenager trapped in his car for an hour before he was rescued. <laughs> All right, you can get these videos just by putting in flooding and then filter your search to this week. The flooding in Texas, I have a subscriber who told me she had three weeks of rain. She lives uh, west of this area right here, west of uh, Fort Worth. Three weeks, ground saturated and Garland and Plano um, woman dies. So for all of the flooding that you just saw, this was the, uh, this was one week ago on the 7th. All of the others, five days ago, three days ago. And Clarksdale, Mississippi. Flood waters rising across the Mid-South, and residents are trying to stop it from coming in homes. Now, this is a residential neighborhood in Clarksdale, Mississippi, one of the areas suffering from multiple inches of rainfall this week. And tonight, there's the larger issue of regional crops being ruined by the flooding. Local 24 News reporter Brad Broders just outside of Clarksdale tonight. And Brad, what's going on down there? Well, Katina, longtime Clarksdale residents tell me they haven't seen such severe rainfall and flooding in these parts since 2016. And while that rain did overwhelm some of those neighborhood streets like you just showed, farmers here are really worried about how that flooding here can ruin thousands of acres of crops here in Cahoma County and across the Mississippi Delta. 
Well, it's, it's upsetting, but there's nothing you can do about it. Thursday afternoon, Bobby Huggins kept a close eye on the floodwaters on his Clarksdale, Mississippi street, inching closer to his front door. I've got flood insurance, but I don't have anything on my contents. According to Cahoma County's Emergency Management Director, Huggins is one of about 70 homeowners most at risk of flood damage following a foot of total rainfall in these parts this week. We've been moving stuff out ever since yesterday afternoon. Yeah, we're about through moving out right now. The relentless rainfall made several Clarksdale streets impassable Thursday and some neighborhoods inaccessible. You see a heavy, heavy rain for an hour, and then it'd break just for a little bit, and then he'd come right back rolling in again. It's just constant rain, constant. Out here, this is just an inconvenience, but it's definitely not a catastrophe. Dan Cirilli's Clarksdale Street is also impacted by the flood waters, but he's more worried about the area's agricultural products ruined before heading to markets. We've got a lot of crops that were laid by and, and on their way to making a really good crop that are now underwater. We're going to have to replant. We've got a real catastrophe on our hands. As far he just said it wasn't a catastrophe. Now he's saying it is a catastrophe. I will say that if even just one individual has a flooded home or a flooded farm, for them, it's a catastrophe. So, all right. As I am wont to do, this is going on and on. Philadelphia, Chester County, flash flooding occurs. And I love watching these reporters with the smile on their face, so disconnected from what they are Reporting is their facial expressions. Okay, yeah. Smile away. Philadelphia. All right. Well, they had an awful lot of rescues, and this guy, well, people are just driving through the waters, and then they have to be rescued, and you know, this flash flooding, what do you hear from people? Oh, my God, it, it took two minutes. It took one minute. It took ten minutes for the f flood to come into my home. A whole lot of people driving, they have no clue. You know, suddenly it's there. So I don't like this, you know. Yeah, there are idiots who, you know, try to make it or whatever. But an awful lot of people are... Well, caught by surprise. Um, Butler County, Pittsburgh, heavy rain. KDKA viewers captured the flooding that hit the Butler area Wednesday afternoon. Multiple fire departments responded. This car got stuck. There were some temporary road closures in the western side of Butler and swollen streams. Like I said, Marsha Rapone lives on West Brady Street, an area prone to flooding because it's in one of the lowest locations in the city. So I came down here, I turned my pump on, and it just poured and poured and poured and poured, and it clicks on and off. So there's some lower spots in the basement that still I haven't swept through. Rapone's neighbor, Brian Kendrick, feels frustration because of the recurring flooding due to the accumulating debris from nearby creeks. He feels dredging the streams would help with the problem. I mean, everybody loses stuff in their basement, gets flooded out. They're really not doing nothing about the problem. Every time. And that's what I hear over and over, and I've been hearing it for years. These cities, these towns that are responsible for... Uh, cleaning up you know their drainage areas the culverts and they don't they don't do it why um you know americans can take a lot we just bend over backwards backwards you know and you have to be nice and you can't hold anybody accountable because that's not nice well that led to this nightmare that we're living right now so philadelphia uh, Maine, Philadelphia, all the way down to Arkansas and Mississippi, and oh, New Jersey, right here. Um, a whole lot of streets. And then you just see the water standing there, not draining anywhere. This is not what we've ever seen before, and people really do need to start questioning 
why is this happening? I'm sorry, it's not climate change. In fact, I have a playlist on my channel all about, you know, this climate change farce, scientists, experts in the field. Yeah, well, you're not going to hear them on mainstream media. You won't even hear them on Amy Goodman, Democracy Now!, um, because they're all mainstream media. They're propaganda arms of our government. Oh, yes, you liberals. Amy Goodman, too. So, um, it just continues, you know. Here, Cleveland, Tower City, center, flooded. All right, you know, the playlists are available. That this is a playlist of facts and evidence. Uh, you can go to my other playlist for uh, geoengineering or um, climate change. I haven't updated my playlist, so you can check out the floods internationally. You can check out the U.S. flooding, uh, global warming, climate change nonsense, and there is Rosa Corey, who just died. Weather modification, geoengineering, chemtrails, more weather modification videos. How about those frequencies? 269 videos of 5G, microwave frequencies, Wi-Fi, health effects. The links not to all of the videos, which are easily accessible just by putting in flooding in your search bar on YouTube. All the other information will be linked to below. Ciao, guys.